It's January 18th, 2026, and this is going to be a fun video to make because we have a lot of crazy winter weather ahead of us. At least it looks like it, and the models are agreeing. Take a look at what the Euro model is showing for snowfall in the States over the next 10 days. The GFS, the Canadian. Notice anything? We have another very serious chance for southern snow. I know the one that's going on right now wasn't as great as we thought it could be, but again, the models have consensus for another really good opportunity here, potentially stretching from portions of Colorado all the way out through Carolina and Virginia, including maybe Arkansas. Tennessee. We'll talk about it. I also want to talk about the cold air and we may set some records here at the end of January. This is the 10 day temperature anomalies from the European ensemble. These are insane cold anomalies for the second and third week of January. Something else we need to discuss. And a big reason for all this cold air is our tropospheric polar vortex. It's not going to be having a good time. Lots of disruption. That cold air that's supposed to be in the North Pole, coldest air on the planet, needs to go somewhere. It's going to be forced down into the mid latitudes where we are. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And of course, if you like like the video? Like the video. Let's get into the weather updates. All right, first, as I always like to do, let's start with our live radar. We do have a blizzard mesoscale discussion up here through portions of North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota, and we have those blizzard warnings up there. Not a bunch of heavy snow falling, but very cold air, very windy conditions, and we do have these consistent clipper systems moving through the upper Midwest right now. We do also have some snow moving through portions of the Mid-Atlantic and New England. This isn't going to be a ton, but we could pick up a surprise two to five inches up here along the coast. It depends where you are with the banding and how that snow ratio is, but we do have some snow flying, so we'll go over the snow totals for this storm in a little bit here. We also have a a lot of this cold rain moving up the coast here. We could see some of this turning into snow as these temperatures drop behind the system as this cold air continues to push out towards the coast. But right now, it is mostly rain. Again, though, we have another great opportunity out here and in the south for snow coming up. Let's get right into our seven to 10 day forecast. This is the latest Euro run. As we push through today and into Monday, this cold air continues to collapse down into the south. Our storm system is going to run off the coast and this clipper system up here is going to begin to make its way out through New England. Now, this is going to activate more lake effect snow. This is very, very cold air. So expect more snow, of course, Western upstate New York, from Watertown all the way down through Buffalo, Western Michigan, UP Michigan, those areas that usually see it with this very cold air and that kind of northwesterly, westerly flow. Getting into Tuesday, getting into Wednesday, now the Clipper system making its way through the upper Midwest, maybe two, and that cold air, that 540 line is staying pretty far south. Notice we start to get a little bit of moisture, trying to push in off the Gulf, trying to push in off the Eastern Pacific as well. We're still dry out west through all of this though. Getting into Thursday, getting into Friday, this is the time frame things get interesting. The GFS sees it, the Canadian sees it, the Euro sees it. Here we go, our 540 line, our polar jet is pretty far to the south. A lot of moisture coming off the Pacific and coming off the Gulf. You start to see our Bear Clinic boundary set up here, and maybe we get a storm system. Maybe we get a winter storm. You can see ice, snow, rain beginning to form in this region as we get into this upcoming Friday. So only about six days out. This is not La La Land at all. We're talking about 120, 126 hours right here on the Euro. This is 24 to 48 hours out from what we would consider decent forecasting range. So I think there's some good confidence in a winter storm forming down here. Obviously, local precipitation, you don't want to forecast this far out, but let's watch this closely. I think the models are onto something. We move through Friday into Saturday. Whoa, let's hope this is snow or a little bit of a mix and not all ice. This would be a bad ice storm. Pushing through Saturday, pushing into Sunday, you start to get heavy snow potentially falling through portions of the central to southern Rockies, Kansas, Oklahoma, northern Texas. Again, if we can get this 540 line, if we can get this polar jet to collapse a little bit more, this can all be snow. Still an opportunity here. We want that. We don't want the ice. Getting through Saturday, getting into Sunday, the system begins to push off to the east. And now suddenly we're getting snow through portions of southern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, central to southern Missouri, and then of course, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, maybe the Carolinas, but North Carolina, Virginia, and then out towards the mid-Atlantic coast. This would be a big storm. We don't want to see this much ice with it though. Pushing out a little bit further. Now we're getting closer to that, like I say, La La Land, closer to eight to 10 days out. We still have all this cold air pushing it out east. Confidence in the cold air is high. Confidence in precipitation out this far. It's tough to tell, but you can see what the Euro wants to do. Another clipper system right here through portions of the Northern Plains, maybe down into the Ohio Valley. Cold air is still barraging the east and what's happening out here. Maybe nor'easter opportunity again. We're going to get lots of opportunities. We just need one to connect this year or two. You never know. If we can get some blocking up here, we can get this type of pattern setting up. Again, models are going to start to show, I think, the possibility for another nor'easter. And who knows, you know, if we do see this winter storm forming, like I said, the models are pretty confident on this. We're about six days out of some sort of winter storm forming down here. This could even tilt and try to run up the coast too. Again, it just depends what's happening with our blocking out to the east. Depends what's happening with our NAO. All right. So how does all this play out on the GFS? We'll fast forward a little bit here. Same thing. A couple of clipper systems through the upper Midwest pushing through the Great Lake region out through New England as we push through this week. Then we get into Thursday, we get into Friday. There's that collapsing jet. There's that moisture feeding off the Pacific and Gulf. There's that Bear Clinic boundary. We start to see some rain. 
ice, sleet, snow, and notice the GFS actually tries to get this wintery mix south of Dallas-Fort Worth, so you would maybe get some snow accumulation here. Tries to get that snow down into Huntsville, Atlanta as well. A little bit farther down into the south through portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and then look at South Carolina on the GFS. Good snow. So they both see something pretty similar. We move farther out on the GFS. Again, we're getting out towards eight to 10 days here, and you can see the GFS trying to run a system just like the Euro up the coast. I like seeing some sort of agreement even that far out. So they're pretty consistent. Cold air continuing to move out east. Look, another, we'll call it nor'easter opportunity here on the GFS. Canadian, how does it see this playing out? Getting into Friday, would you look at that? Snow, ice, sleet, rain, same area. We got that 540 line. We got that freezing air pushing into this moisture coming off the Pacific and Gulf. We got this storm forming. And the Canadian brings that snow farther south too through Atlanta, through portions of South Carolina, North Carolina as well. So lots of good opportunities here. I showed this in the beginning of the video. Here's what the Canadian thinks for snow. Giving you a chance, Dallas-Fort Worth, obviously Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, Nashville. I'm not gonna name all the cities, but Charlotte, Richmond. So pretty good opportunity there. We can see how the Euro handles this. The Euro likes the opportunity for big snow into Tulsa, Oklahoma City, maybe Little Rock, Nashville, Charlotte, and the other surrounding cities. And there's the GFS. The GFS wants to try and put a foot of snow into upstate South Carolina. We'll see about that. But again, plenty of good opportunities here, even maybe some good snow into Atlanta. Again, the consensus in the six to eight day range from these globals is pretty surprising. So I'd like to see that. European AI sees this storm too, but pushes it a little bit farther to the north. I know people in the mid-Atlantic, New England would love that. And then taking a look at how the graph cast looks at this. Let's move this ahead into this Friday. The graph cast sees this as well, but forming a little bit later. And it agrees a little bit more with the Euro AI. You can see the graph cast wants to keep this winter storm farther to the north. Is that a possibility? It's still is. Both AI models see that. Although again, our Canadian Euro GFS think this storm is going to be farther to the south. It is going to be cold and not, hey, it's January. It's cold in the United States. Of course, it's winter. I'm talking about cold for January standards through the rest of this month, maybe pushing in to the beginning of February. This right here is a European ensemble, 10 day temperature anomalies. And oh my gosh, expect to see some records broken if this does verify, especially through this region, portions of the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, Great Lakes region, and upper Midwest. I know this next Saturday here in Minneapolis, our forecast high is negative six degrees. And I'm not talking about with wind chill, the actual high negative six degrees with a actual low of negative 25, not accounting for wind chill. So there's going to be some crazy temperatures up here in the second half of January. And take a look at how far these below average temperatures are trying to stretch. So really much of the country, it's really just the Southwest here, central to Southern Rockies, California, that may run a little bit above average. And again, this isn't cold, chilly, slightly below average air for January. This is well below average air. This is potentially record breaking air second half of January, which again is why you're going to have more opportunities for that coastal snow and Southern snow, because you need those temperatures to get below freezing. You need the moisture to be there but especially those temperatures, it is hard to get below freezing near the coast here. It is hard to get below freezing running up right here along the coast in the Southeast and in the Southern Mid-Atlantic, but you'll have those temperatures. Here's the six to 10 day forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. Of course, much of the country is below average. Might have a little bit of a ridge down here in the Southeast and we're warm, like I said, in the Southwest, portions of the Central to Southern Rockies as well. But this right here is a big story in the six to 10 day range. This region right here specifically could be running anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees below average through this time frame. Very, very cold, especially in the third and fourth week of January. Getting into the eight to 14 day. East is extremely cold. You can see out here portions of New England as well. The West is warm. Rough winter for the West right now. Moving into the three to four weeks, much of the same story. Then we go out towards a month. Tough to tell what's going to happen out here, but much of the country could be running average to below average here as well. This right here is a big part of the story. Large Alaskan Ridge right here. This is pushing into our tropospheric polar vortex. The polar vortex are these winds that circle the Arctic here. And the faster they're moving, the harder it is for that coldest air on the planet to escape. If you start getting a ridge pushing into it, higher heights, warmer temperatures, those winds start to slow and that north pole that arctic air has to go somewhere it leaks down into the mid latitudes we don't just have a big Alaskan ridge. Look what's happening over here, over Greenland, over Europe, another ridge pushing in. This is going to displace, like I said, the coldest air on the planet down into the south. And this is an ensemble right here. This is not a deterministic run. This is a European ensemble. And we continue to see the tropospheric polar vortex completely broken down and disrupted all the way to the end of this model here. So January 30th, again, very, very interesting time to be living in the plains and out east right now with all of this cold air. And maybe in the south, again, this is going to help promote more coastal and southern snow. And I really think this Friday, we could see something big whether it be a big ice storm, big blizzard for the South, it's going to be significant, I think. Last but not least, I wanted to go over the expected snowfall totals from the National Weather Service for the next 72 hours. You can see out here, maybe a dusting to half an inch through portions of Eastern Virginia, Eastern Maryland. Now you get into Delaware, Jersey, Southeastern Pennsylvania. An inch or two is possible. I'd say about an inch is the expected. Moving up here towards New York City, Long Island, two to three inches expected. You can see here, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. We're expecting anywhere between really three to five inches across the state and then up through coastal 
domain as well. Watertown and the region around it could get absolutely slammed with this lake effect snow here, maybe multiple feet of snow. And then you can see here from really Buffalo all the way down here to Erie, we could see anywhere between six inches to a foot, if not two feet locally in some areas because of that lake effect snow. Western Michigan as well, lake effect snow is going to turn on, including the UP here. Still expecting a couple inches across Wisconsin, maybe another inch out here through eastern Minnesota. A little bit of a dusting up to an inch through portions of Colorado, the Dakotas, Montana as well. We take a look at the high ends here. Now, if we're lucky, Philly, maybe you end up with a couple inches here. New York City, maybe you end up with four to five inches. I'd say three to four inches. Long Island, five to six inches. Boston on the high end, maybe nine to 10 inches. I don't think you're going to see that much snow. It's a possibility. They're seeing about eight and a half to nine inches on the high end here. And then you can see across coastal New England, we could see anywhere between five to nine inches if you get lucky with some banding here. And you can see maybe a little bit more through portions of Wisconsin as well on the high end. Maybe we get closer to two to four inches. And then up here, Northern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, pushing a couple inches here on the high end. Our Arctic oscillation is looking absolutely insane in the teleconnections. Take a look at this. This is our European AI. Very negative Arctic oscillation. Why? That tropospheric polar vortex breakdown is happening. Take a look at the graph cast. This is a wild, like I said, especially for the second half of January, where this is historically the coldest time of the year for the Northern Hemisphere. European weeklies sees the same thing. GFS sees the same thing. Let's take a look at our NAO though. Can we get a very negative NAO for a big coastal snowstorm, maybe a nor'easter? European AI thinks so. The graph cast thinks so. European weeklies think so. GFS thinks so. These are aligned. This is very impressive. Snow in the south snow along the coast consistent clippers probably through the upper Midwest through the Great Lakes region now towards New England. This is going to be a cold and snowy time for the East. I would say if we're going to get a big snowstorm though, it's going to favor the Ohio Valley. Maybe, I don't want to say the South, but again, North Texas pushing out into the Carolinas, Virginia. If we're going to get a big snowstorm, I think it's going to be along the coast or down there. Again, I think Northern tier states with how cold this is going to be, we're going to be getting fed these clippers just because it's hard to get a big snowstorm, a strong deepening low when it's too cold. You need a little bit of that warmth. You need a little bit of that cold, warm air interaction. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Like I said, if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And of course, if you like the video, like the video. I do try and put out content like this every day and stream every day. I will be streaming again later this evening to answer all of your weather related questions. And if you want to join one of the best weather communities out there, feel free to join my discord. The link to my discord is in all of my YouTube video descriptions. We have a great community in there, tons of great weather knowledge. So feel free to join. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream.